See, Jesus has the power and that healing for you personally. That person, oh, that healing is right in his hands with your name on it. Yes, he does. He has it for you. He has it. God bless you, sir. Do you have a relationship with Jesus Christ? You do? Hallelujah. Did Jesus tell you anything this week about, about yourself or even about this world? Because Jesus is, always wants to have a conversation with everyone, you know? That he uh, he appreciates who I am, and I try to be like him All right. every day. So, what's your name? Uh, Jay. 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 Nice Jay. to meet you. All right. Nice to meet you. Oh, what's your name? Mike. 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 Yeah. So I, I heard the speaker as I was walking down the street. Mike. What's going on over here? Sound like a Maui. <laughs> yeah, just uh, ministering the gospel because, like, here, like, you know, here in Price, there are so many lost people in Price, and sometimes, you know. You, you can see it in Walmart. You can see it in yeah. Smiths. You can see just uh, in, in their face. You can see in their gesture, you know, based on how, how they walk. Some of them are broken. Some of them are lost. And they don't have anywhere to go. They go to the therapist and the therapist. They care for them, but they can't really read their hearts. But Jesus can. And so this is why. This is why I'm out here ministering the gospel. Because I really believe that Jesus... Jesus does not wish anyone to perish, not just in body, but also in spirit. So, like, he doesn't wish anyone to perish, you know. And so, like, uh, I'm, I'm out here, I'm ministering the gospel because I love Jesus, I love people. And, um, you know, uh, some people, they, they do pass by, they give me the middle finger, they say, hell Satan, and, you know, they look crazy, they're like, ah, they, they do that. But you know what, I, I, I still come out here and minister the gospel every few weeks. But um, well, they don't. They don't really know what they're doing. If they, if yeah, they <laughs> and they don't. You know, that's that's the. I don't understand. So I'm, I've I've been lucky to have the gospel be in my life this so much. Amen. So Amen. it's just something that for me, I'm very grateful that I grew up with that, and it's yes. it's framed my whole life. Um, but then I do see people who don't have that in today's world. There's, there's so many who do not understand. Okay, so, um, well, and let me let me ask you a question. Because yeah. are you uh, LDS? I am. Okay. Yeah. All right. So things that one main thing that I hear from uh, LDS members is that I want to be like Jesus. Okay. So. And, That's the best example possible. Yes, yes. And so, like, you know, in, in John chapter 14, 16, I believe, Jesus says, if you love me, obey my commandments. And he's telling his disciples this. Disciples mean student. Mm -hmm. If you love me, obey my commandments. That means his teachings. Mm -hmm. And I, if you love me, obey my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate who will never leave you. He is the Holy, Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost who will lead you into all truth. The world cannot receive him that he's talking about the Holy Ghost because it isn't looking for him and doesn't recognize him. But you know him, he's telling his disciples, but you know him, Jesus, because he will live, he is with you now and later will be in you. So Jesus is saying that I will live in you but he's saying that my representative, later on in the chapter, he said, I will send my representative, that is the Holy Spirit, who will lead you into all truth. So the Holy Spirit is a representative of Jesus. And so it's, it's an advocate of, of Jesus. And so like when, you know, I understand, you know, everyone wants to be like Jesus and, and you know, they, they want to be nice and kind and gentle, but it's always the Holy Spirit that works in you, that is doing the work in you. That's leading that's, you. That's how, that's how we can be purified, cleansed from our sin, taught the truth, and it helps, it helps us to understand. It's, I mean, it's, it is literally a member of the Godhead yeah. uh, that can be with us. Now, that's obviously, right. Jesus cannot walk with us right now yeah. as, as he physically did with his disciples right. when he, uh, after he was resurrected. And that won't happen again until the second coming. That's right. And that this is our chance to, I guess, determine if we're if we're ready for 
him to return, mm -hmm. our hearts prepared for that. And do we have the, the faith that he wants us to have? Mm -hmm. So that we're ready for it. Now it's you know, not to be perfect. It's definitely not about being perfect. It's not, we don't earn our salvation. It's, it's the Savior paid for our sins. All the asses that we exercise faith in him and repent of our sins. Mm -hmm. And right. keep his commandments. Yeah. It's it's uh basically it's it's there's no better deal out there. Where you, yeah. I mean, think about how the world treats you. If you make a couple mistakes, like sorry, Charlie, you're out. Yeah. But in in the regards to our relationship with God through through His Son Jesus Christ, if we repent of our sins and consistently repent of our sins, yeah, it's it's a, is. Yeah. But if we reject Him, mm -hmm. then our sins are our own. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's, it's like simple. I always say this. I say that yeah. we have the greatest relationship going on in existence. You know, we we do, and, and many people don't know it. Yeah, yeah, and it's too bad. But yeah. like you know, I you know, like I go to Walmart. I go to, he come here, and I go to um, downtown where the radio station is. Oh, okay. Yeah. And so I minister the gospel, and I evangelize to anyone you know that's passing by or anyone that doesn't ignore me. So I'm glad you didn't ignore me. Uh, some other people ignore me, but you know, like um, I believe that everyone can be saved, but they just need to reveal, know the truth about who Jesus is, what the kingdom of God is like, and also what this world is like. Like the comparison between the two, because it's just so far apart. This world and the kingdom of God, and they need to choose. They have that free will, and so like ultimately, it is choice, right? Yeah. I mean, it's if someone. You can't force anyone to be saved. Right. Um, and God, God cannot and will not do that. Mm -hmm. It's not. It's not in the program. It's not, it was never designed that way, and it can't be. That's actually what, the reason why we're here is because we have that ability to choose for ourselves. Um, that that makes it a lot more painful when someone says, "Nope, I don't want that." Yeah. I, I have some family members who who do not exercise faith and. And God and His Son Jesus Christ anymore. Yeah. But I have hope that maybe someday they'll they'll kind of come around. But it's just it's still it's like if they persist in their choices, you worry about what will happen to them in the, in yeah. the long run. So yes, we I mean absolutely that everyone can be saved, but they have to be willing, taught, know yeah. know the truth, and then decide what they'll do with it. Yeah. And that's something that, um, you know, it's it's not a, it's not necessarily a. You don't have to be a certain level of, of like like good, you know. Mm -hmm. like, okay, eighty percent like Jesus, you passed. No, yeah, yeah. it's it's a. Where what's the condition of your heart? How do you put in your faith into action? Not necessarily a certain number of actions or a certain amount of action, but God knows us. He's a, he's a perfect judge. So, yeah. Not up to, it's not up to some sort of arbitrary standard or threshold. Yeah. It's not like passing a test. Oh, 90%. That's the pass rate. You yeah. Get to 90%, yeah. You can't do it. I mean, like. That's, uh, that's why it's the best deal. There I is. mean, like yeah. some people, so, they they turn away from the church because uh, they they go to a church. It doesn't matter if it's LDS or if it's Pentecostal. I used to go to Pentecostal. I'm just, I'm I'm like, no more denomination. I just love Jesus, and so. Uh, people go go to a church, and what happens is is that like um, they trust in in the minister or the pastor or the bishop more than they trust in in, in Jesus, yes. and so they listen to the pastor, which is fine. Mm -hmm. But it's like you know they walk out of the church and say, "Oh, that was a good word," you know, yeah. And they receive it kind of. I mean, like if you know the parable of the, uh, the, the seed, yeah, in yeah. different grounds, stony ground. The yeah, good ground. And, yeah, and yeah. and so they received the word, and you know, uh, the well, the first one is the rocky ground, and then of course you know the devil sweeps it away, sweeps it, and then the second one is you know it grows somewhat. They, they receive it with joy. It doesn't take root. Right. Not yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then the third one is you know they they receive it, but the cares and the things of this world they just. Okay, about it's like they're they're picking a side. Like, oh, the, I love the world more than I love Jesus, you know. And so, like, um, the you know, like 
I think that I believe that people when people fall away from a church or they don't go to church anymore I believe that they, they do it well yeah they get choked out and they say well I got better things to do and you know um, I, I'll say this and you know this, this may offend you a little bit it's not about denomination or anything but you know like I believe that a real relationship with God through Jesus Christ is speaking with Jesus like waking up to Jesus just waking up saying Lord what do you have for me? you know father what do you have for me? and so like when I ask them I like I have a great expectation like I, I don't know if you speak, speak to him every day but perhaps you do I, I mean, it, it, it sounds yes. like it sounds like you do absolutely because you you know you know his his scriptures you know his word and so um, you know there's always a great expectation tomorrow's Monday it's one of those days in which uh, the, the average person, oh, back to work again, <laughs> gotta grind again. And Mondays so, aren't the happiest usually. But. Yeah. And so, uh, but on Monday, I'm like, Lord, what do you have for me this week? You know, what, what do, you, do you want me to minister to someone? I don't know, Lord, just lead me. I, I think that's a, that's a good way to approach each day, is yeah. asking God what He would have us do. Yeah. You know, it's something I. Some days I could be much better at doing that with greater sincerity. Mm. You know, I can get used to saying your prayers every day, but, you know, do we maintain our focus yeah. also while we pray? And so not just saying our prayers, asking for those things, and really calling through. Yeah. You know, that's, yeah. that's kind of the sort of people sometimes, yeah. myself included, is calling through. You know, yeah. you, you have an intention, and then sometimes it just doesn't, you don't. Yeah. You don't pull through. Yeah. You know? I believe that like you we, have a good we heart. Try again the next day, right? You have a good heart, sir. You have a good heart. You too. And, 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 and I, I appreciate you being out here because there are people maybe that will listen. Yeah. You know, it's it's especially when you you know, you get you get their attention with this and if they're walking by and they can talk to you and then you have a chance to have a personal conversation with them, you can touch their heart. Especially someone who is totally missing that in their lives. Yeah. You know? But I think I liked what you said a moment ago, which is people go to church, they have a great teacher or pastor or something like that yeah. that inspires them. And they like it and they, they're following it and they're doing their best. But if they don't take that themselves and find a way to have that personal relationship with God and doing their own effort mm -hmm. to build their faith, then in the long run, that's that's where maybe the, the seed won't take root, right? So having that ability for them to study themselves, understand the truth for themselves, pray, and receive that guidance. Yeah. So yeah, it's yeah. it's something that it's it's there for everyone. God will point everyone to the truth if they seek. Yeah, they honestly seek it. Yeah, I believe they will, so. They will take us. God will take us there. But, but you yeah. sure you're not a preacher? <laughs> so well, I mean, in our faith. <laughs> It's kind of, I served a two-year mission. Mm -hmm. um, that involved essentially being a preacher every day, right? So we taught people the gospel every day. Right. Um, and then in different callings and assignments here, uh, or, or after the, my mission. <laughs> so I, I had to teach Sunday school classes. I taught in church. Like in terms of like a, a talk, like you give, you be assigned a sermon basically. Right. So that's so in our faith, that's actually there's no single paid minister in a sense that they do assign a volunteer to lead it, mm -hmm. and then he has counselors. So it's it's a it's this level of the church is completely voluntary like service. There's no pay. There's nothing. But um, the uh, everyone kind of participates in that. So in a sense, mm -hmm. you know. Yes, and then also as a member of my faith, we the men receive the priesthood. Uh, yeah, that, you know, to live, live according to you know, certain standards, and you're wor considered worthy to receive the priesthood. And you know, if you basically are going to church and living according to certain standards, you you receive the priesthood. And that basically, yes, like in a sense, I am a minister and a a, a current assignment. Okay. Per se, I don't have a current assignment, but I am. I uh, have those things that God has has given me the priesthood. Um, yeah. By the laying on of hands, and, and amen. And that's something that, so the ability, to, the chance to bless and serve others. It's been at times in my life I haven't 
I've, stri- I've striven to live up to it, yeah. but also I've had great blessings when mm-hmm. I've had those chances to work with individuals and help yeah. them yeah. and in some way and feel that God directed me in some way to help them mm-hmm. with, with something they needed. Yeah. So that's been the, the very rewarding and bus, you know, a great blessing in my life. A very rewarding thing and a great blessing. So, yes. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's having the gospel is a great blessing. Yes, yes it is. Um, you can't forget and shouldn't forget. So. Yes, yes. You said the, the laying of hands. Is that uh, the healing of the sick and also praying over people? Yes. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Yeah, it's, it's a great blessing that we have that ability yes. to. I mean, it's essentially the ability to act in the name of our Heavenly Father, and that's a very important responsibility in you know, being the Lord's hands. Yes, yes, it so, is. Yeah. You know, like um, in the Bible, like uh, I love when Jesus says, um, many a times after healing, he says, "Your faith has healed you," and so like. Yeah. It's, it's always important to faith is, is crucial in that yeah. because like the, the person that's laying of hands you know because uh, um, <clears throat> you know I, I lay hands as well you know and so like the, the person that's you know having the hands laid on them it's, it's always important to just make sure that they have faith and not just you know, just say you know I'm gonna lay hands on you and that's it <laughs> you know but uh, it's, Plus, it's for, according to their faith in Christ that blessing if they do not have any faith although there is that in the Old Testament or New Testament you know, I believe helped out my own belief mm-hmm. you know the healing of the, his son that was uh, what, what kind of condition did he have was some kind of seizure like condition or the, I forget it was some kind of uh, I can't remember the name of it uh, uh, stroke it's, it's kind of like some kind of epileptic or uh, almost like he, but to them it looked like he was possessed but like physically he's uh, dementia cerebral pal- the palsy uh, yeah yeah palsy that's it so they called it the palsy then so it's probably cerebral palsy or something like that uh, but it's you know the father the, the son obviously couldn't really comprehend much of what was going on but yes but, you know. uh, and he's like I believe I'll bow my unbelief you know and that's I think, again, perfect faith isn't required. Mm. Only the faith that we, you know, some amount of, some amount of faith, but yeah, for like faith that's more than mustard seed. Yeah, yeah. mustard seed can become a great thing. Yeah, big tree. You know? Yeah. So even yeah. that small seed. But that's right. well, it was great chatting with you. Oh, it's and great meeting you, Mike. Have a blessed Sabbath day, and oh, yeah. thank you for for exercising your faith. Yes. Uh, thank you for uh, coming up and just encouraging me because. Um, there are only a few, I would say more people ignore me and curse me out more than encourage me. So, you're, you're a great blessing. A great oh, blessing. well, I'm, I'm glad. Oh, yeah. Can, can I give you a hug? So, um, we meet on Sundays at 12. Yes. If you ever want to come visit, if you ever just want to check out, have you ever been to a congregation, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints? Mm, no, no, no. You're welcome to come visit sometime if you'd like. We're, I mean, we're pretty easygoing people, so hmm. yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll dwell on it. I'll yeah, dwell. yeah, come on, come on by, and I'm sure we have have uh, we love to share our faith with you and hmm. and see what we can do to help you. So, hmm. you know, that's all right. Sounds sounds good, brother. It would be it would be great. So I don't know. Do you have a church you go to here? Um, well, or just I doing uh, this, uh, just volunteering on your own. Uh, well, I usually go to the church and help her. It's called uh, Lost and Found Ministries. Lost and Found, okay. Yeah, and so yeah. Um, it's uh, it's like the first exit. Matter of fact, it's closer to the Shell gas station over there. It's so basically right out of the canyon, like coming out of the yeah. Price Canyon up there? Yeah, just coming out of the canyon. And, okay. Uh, it, it was a thrift store, and then uh, the minister, Minister Davy, Pastor Davy, he decided to turn it into a full time ministry. Okay. And so um, it's it's really good because like um, they go into the uh, the jails mm-hmm. I think on Wednesday or Thursday and they uh, they minister to to the those in the jail. yeah because because <clears throat> those those guys like no one really no one really visits some of them and so like they're in there alone their their mother or their father doesn't visit them their brother doesn't visit them and so 
there in there all alone and they need some hope. Yeah. They need, you know, to turn That's their life around. definitely people at their bottom, lowest point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so. so. And, and uh, even more, those, those guys are really hungry for the word. They're really hungry for, for Jesus. Like, maybe never, they never heard of, of him before. So what I understand about Bryce is that it's kind of a demographically a different place than other parts of Utah in terms of the people's backgrounds. Mm -hmm. That's to say, you know, lightly, uh, gently. But um, basically what I heard from others is that you've got the members of my church who are fairly established in terms of like having family and connections and all that. And then people came in to work the mines. And so basically what I, what I exp expressed was you've got people on drugs and doing all kinds of things in their lives and kind of just totally ought, no no religious anchor at all and then you have people that are you know of, of the, that are already set in, in my church so it's kind of like that's what a, a, maybe a stereotype right there's more to it than that but just it seemed like that was what they observed is like yep you got all these people with nothing and then they're on drugs and then not all but you know yeah, you got some yeah, of that yeah. now do you want to say hi is your dog nice yeah he's a Border Collie. It's okay, Alex. You know what, Mike? I think that um, Jesus has like a, a greater position for you. I don't know where where uh, I'll say this. Whatever position that you're thinking of right now, mm -hmm. like as far as going, he's gonna go past that. He's gonna exceed going to go past and exceed your, what you're, you're thinking right now, past your imagination. And so I don't know, because like, based on what, what the words that you gave to me and just your, uh, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to um, uh, boast, but I'm just saying that Jesus does have a certain position for you. Just uh, stay humble as you are right now, you know, uh, stay hooked to his word. Cause I, I know I know you love Jesus. I know you love His Word. I know you love His teachings, and and um, your fruit, your fruit is going to multiply. Harvest, as a matter of fact, is going to multiply 30, 60, 90, 100 times. And so um, I can see that see that in you. And so, well, I I appreciate that. Oh yeah. You know, yeah. There's times when when I feel like I want to do better. Um, it made my life more meaningful. I, I'm, I'm actually a flight instructor at Utah State. Oh I, yeah. I teach at here. Now we, no, no. Now we know. You come here, buddy. Come here. Come on, Max. You say. Too aggressive a play. Yeah. Being on the leash, okay. Get tight here. Smaller now. Huh? Yeah, this, I need to replace this collar, but. No, thank, thank you for, for yeah. that, that encouragement. Um, hey. I think we all need that sometimes to, yeah. to buoy up our soul and help us keep going. Yeah, I, so, like, I believe that you're going to be like a... Because when, when I heard you say lean up hands, it, I saw like just like a, a warrior in you, you know? You, you got your, uh, you know, your armor. You know, you got your salvation, you got your, you got everything, you got the belt of truth, you got this, you know, the, you got everything that you need. And as you go on, your arm is going to start getting thicker, but it's not going to get heavier. It's going to get so thick and nothing, and like nothing of the devil, of, the, of, of evil is going to, can, can come against that armor. Just as long as you have that armor on. And so, like, I can see that in you. You say you're a fighting instructor. I think... I'll say this, because some, some things are, are, are in which God has placed you in does have to do with where God is going to take you. And so, since you're a fight instructor, you know how to defend, you know how to take on offense and defense, you know how to get in the right position, you know, to uh, make sure that, you know, you're not manipulated. And so, like, I think God is, is, is using you, uh, just using you just through His Holy Spirit just to... Just to tell people how to how to armor up, how to armor up in, in in his spirit, how to armor up in everything that they need to live a godly life, mm -hmm. you know. Because um, that's that's my desire to to help people 
have limited to follow Heavenly Father that way and live yeah. that way and be protected from the devil, you know, because there's a lot of dangers out there, a lot of, a lot of things that can get people. Oh, yeah. And I definitely have that desire of wanting to help them. And... Yep. Yeah. So, but yeah, I, I appreciate your words. Yeah, come, yeah. come visit us sometime. We'll, we'll chat more. Okay. And uh, I don't know if, if you guys meet. Do you guys meet in like the early morning? Do you guys meet like nine in the morning at your church? Well, we meet at uh in the evening, like uh, six or six thirty. Okay. And so it's um, every um, Tuesday, Friday, and Saturday. Okay. Well, not Saturday. Saturday's one p.m. Oh. Okay. And so um, yeah, we we just meet together and. The thing is, like, we share revelation with one another. Whatever the Holy Spirit is given to us, we share revelation. And, you know, if something happened during the week or something that God has given to us, we share it with one another. And, you know, unbelievably, it, I'm not going to say unbelievably, but with God, all things are possible. Mm -hmm. It all connects. The revelation start connecting. And it's like, wow. You know, but um, let, let me let you go because... Yeah, because the dogs are definitely... Okay, it's good to meet you again. You gotta keep serving, so. But yeah. Have a good afternoon. All right, you too. Yeah, since it doesn't conflict with your meetings, come join us 12 o'clock. So, and then the first Sunday uh -huh. of every month, it's kind of like what you're saying. It's a testimony meeting. Testimony meeting. So people share their testimonies of the Savior. Oh, that's good. Every every first Sunday, typically, unless there's like a special meeting or something, but most of the time it's that first Sunday. Okay. And then otherwise, we have classes where. We study this year. We're actually studying for the Book of Mormon. Then we have other weeks. The off weeks are like talks by church leaders that we study, basically teaching about Jesus Christ. All right, Jesus. So, yeah. Hallelujah. But, okay. All right. Glad to meet you. All yeah. right. God bless you.